So really beautiful. And if you haven't built a motorcycle kit before, if you're looking for a challenge, great kit. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and today I'm going to be looking at this brand new Tamiya kit. This is the Team Suzuki GSX RR 2020 uh, GP bike. So this is the uh, championship winning bike of 2020 uh, of Mir. And it's actually quite an interesting bike. Uh, I haven't looked at bikes in a long time in detail, but this particular one, uh, I guess all GP bikes these days have quite a lot of detail uh, in their technologies. And this has got a few notable things which are, I, I find really interesting. So let's have a closer look. All right, so here we go. We've got the box art. Really nice box art. Always like to have your box art. Very clean. Gives really good detail on certain things if you, you can't work it out in the manual. Have a closer look here. All right, so when you look at it, it just looks like a bike, right? But the bikes have changed quite a bit. And the most noticeable differences are you look at the, uh, the exhaust system. Uh, they've got the reversed uh, forks for the suspension. They use uh, steel carbon disc brakes now. There's also a cover on the disc, maintain heat. There's a little scoop down the bottom here for collecting more air towards the rear tire. And then there's these extra grips around here for the thighs of the rider as well. And one big thing, this aerodynamic aid, which is like the front wing of an F1 car, which is right in the front there. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside the goodies of this box. All right, as you can see, the boxes are actually quite thick. It's quite a lot of parts. Great thing about uh, Tamiya bikes, I think Tamiya bikes did, um, well, Tamiya have made a standard in a lot of uh, different categories of modeling. Now with the bikes, 12 scale, nice good size, so that you can actually see the engine detail. It's almost like building the, the bike yourself, uh, for real. And then you have all the, the cowling components. They're screwed on, so you can easily uh, screw them off and you can view the inside of the frame. We can leave certain um, panels off as well. And then of course there's tires and such. You always get a little screwdriver. There's a famous Tumi screwdriver for the small screws. Little screws in there as well, rubber tires, and quite a lot of hosing as well. But before I get into detail, let me just put this aside and we'll have a closer look at all these parts. Okay, let's move that like that. All right, so we're gonna start off. Oh, let's look at the, um, the cowling first. Okay, so the cowling's all white, so I'm gonna bring this across so it's easier for you to see. All right, so inside we've got two components. We've got the front cowling, okay, as you see there. And then we have the tank as well. And they're all in one piece. Makes it a lot easier for assembling later because you're gonna to have to match up all these side cowlings together. And then also when you're painting it up for all the, uh, the racing colors too, because there's gonna to be quite a bit of mask on this particular livery. But that's the great thing about these racing bikes as well. Once you uh, achieve all the difficulties of painting, they actually look really spectacular. Okay, so that's the cowling to start with. And then from here we have another sheet of white parts, which is the rest of the cowling. So you've got, uh, that's the seat section here, in two halves. You've got the lower parts of the cowl, which is on the very bottom of the, the bike, side components. And then you've got the, uh, the mud flaps, so that's for the front end. And then you've got parts of the seat. Wing components here, so that's like the uh, front aerodynamic aid right there. And parts of the stand and, uh, let's see, what are those little bits? Little contraption here, we'll find out in the manual. Okay, so from there we move on to the black parts. Okay, so rather than have a black background, let's go back to the white. All right, so we've got a big bag of parts here. There's actually two sprues within, so it may be a bit difficult for you to see. But along the front here, we have the frame the main frame sides here, two halves. Exhaust system. Okay, so you've got your, your pipes here. Additional pipes here, because this is actually, uh, the engines were a four cylinder inline. Parts of the front uh, fork. You've got the rear mud flap there. On this side, there's the seat. There's the rear swing arm. You've got your wheels. In here, handlebars, you can just see the chain there with the, uh, the sprockets. 
and that's another thing that Tamiya started with, they split the chain so it's easier to feed it through the, the swing arm. Got the cover there for the, uh, the dry clutch. Top part of the, uh, the air box. A few other bits and pieces there too, which you can't quite recognize. This part here looks like the, uh, the steering damper. And there's a rod for the steering damper because that's actually going to move throughout the, uh, the tube because I have working um, steering as well. The forks will, will move. Okay, and then from there, you've got selection of, I guess you call them grey parts or silver parts. So these are very traditional to me too. You have multi-coloured parts within the kit and the silver parts are normally left for the engine components. So you can see the engine parts here. You've got your four-cylinder inline got your reversed forks here so they had the oil and shocks on them parts of the uh, the frame I guess what do you call this that's the actual stand I guess that's a stand which um, holds up the bike you've got the uh, all the cooling for the front end or your radiators you got the disc brakes multi-component here and then you've got your covers for the front discs that's in two pieces head of the engine Got calipers for the brakes. What's we have here? You got the sides of the engines there as well. Here we got your fuel tank. The fuel tank's quite nice. It's all in this single piece here. Two components to make it up. And then there's the clutch itself there. And you can see from here, 12 scale. Very decent size, you can actually paint those, you can weather it up and it'll look really nice. Particularly the clutch, clutches are quite colourful and they usually have quite a few different colours there, different coloured bolts and such. And then also the exhaust which I showed earlier, if you do those right and get the burnt titanium effects, it looks superb. Okay, so that's most of the plastic components. Now from there there was that bag which I showed earlier, this has got the, uh, the slick tyres, a narrow one for the, uh, the front, thick one at the back section of vinyl tubing that's for all the uh the brake lines and other um, plumbing within the engine a little screwdriver there which is for the small screws you can just see the spring there as well that's for the rear uh, shock on the swing arm there's a selection of really small poly caps in here as well for rotating components you might just see some of the screws here as well so long screws for going through the, uh, the rear wheel attach it to the swing arm and a larger poly cap there as well. Okay, from there we've got uh, clear parts. Clear parts might be a bit hard to see there. It's a bit easier to see there. Okay, so you've got the uh, the obvious parts being the windshield. Now there's some other parts here as well. So there's wheels here for the stand. Uh, there's the grips here for the thighs. And they're molded in clear too. Now I don't know why they've actually decided to do that. Because you will be painting these and it wouldn't look right having them clear. I guess the wheels would look pretty, pretty spectacular if you left them clear on the stand. So I'm not too sure about that. Might have to do a bit more investigating to see how this is going to improve the model. But I guess it is because they just had to make a, uh, another sprue, I guess. Because if it's only the obvious clear parts, it only would have been this. So rather than trying to add them onto perhaps another mold which was already full, they've decided to put them here. All right, so we've got that. All right, so that's all the uh, the components there. I've got the uh, the decals, which are in two sheets. I won't be able to see them all here. Oh, okay, look at this. We've got some uh, masking as well, which is included, which is handy. So some of the complicated uh, paint schemes, uh, masking like these sort of shapes can be really complicated, particularly if you're a beginner. So it definitely helps to have them pre-printed onto a sheet of masking. You just need to trim these out along the lines. Now this black section here, I'm not too sure what that is actually. It's a vinyl component somewhere on the bike, must have missed it in the manual. And then you have your really nice fluoro decals there too. Okay, so what have we got on this little one here? Okay, so there's a, some of the, the multicolored printing is on the smaller sheet. And all the larger stuff, including the fluoro, is on the larger sheet. 
Okay. So from there, we've got uh, this little guide here. So this is appearing in a lot more Tamiya uh, kits now, the color guide. Definitely very helpful because usually with a, a decal uh, instruction manual in black and white, sometimes it can be very hard to follow where things go. And particularly with these racing ones, you can see just a number of decals here. Each one of these numbers within a circle is a separate decal. You've got your options here for the two riders. So Joan Mir, who is the championship winner, and then also his teammate who came third in that particular year. So that's Alex Rins. There's also another one here, which was a test rider if you so wish to do. So I guess look, the options in there, um, which is interesting because usually I wouldn't include any numbers for the test rider, but imagine doing all three bikes. So again, have three bikes lined up with these variations on them. Look quite interesting. Okay, so from there, we've got some of the background. It's in multiple languages. So there's Japanese, there's English, there's German, and there's French. Okay, and then we get on to the manual. So manual we have here. All right, let's just shift that over. All right, so manual is a pretty traditional layout for to me a manual. You've got the box art again here, some warnings, paint code here in uh, for Tamiya, and then we've got some a tool guide, uh, which is on the bottom there. All right, so as we open it up, they talk about some options. So this is a I guess it's a, a level up option pack, which you can get. So it includes photo etch parts, um, metal uh, forks. Uh, I think it's actually working suspension as well on this one, but they just give you a bit of extra detail. So you don't have to have that to actually build it, but it's good to have if you plan to have the detail before you begin the kit. Okay, some uh, guides on how to uh, spray paint. And then we start into the actual construction. Okay, so we start with the engine, which is a fairly traditional part for a bike. Everything hangs around the engine. So you can see how the engine components are going together. You've got uh, multiple parts for the actual casing. And then we've got the clutch going on. You've got the head. Spark plug leads. You've got uh, the water pump and, uh, and hosing. And then we move on to the air box. That sits on top of the engine here, and then the frame starts going together. So there's the main frame. Get your two halves, you get your paint codes here. Because certain areas will be better if you paint it as you go along, because you won't be able to get into it because it's such a complicated kit. Okay, you got some of the uh, uh, the footrest, and then we get into a mating of the engine into the framework. So that sits within the center. You've got the instrument panel going into place. Over here, we've got the rear shock shock got multiple pieces so you can see there's these are where those small poly caps are going and it's actually working I would su suspect okay so that will add some sort of resistance there as it's squeezing the shock together and there's a spring itself there okay from there we've got the swing arm going together two halves shock going through the middle you have decals here for each side of those sponsorships and here you can see the uh, uh, the chain arrangement which I, I showed you where it's split here so I can easily go through a swing arm and then it pops into place okay wheels with a rear disc brake tires go on with the decals that go onto the tire just see tire is uh mated up to the swing arm so you can see the caliper just there over here you've got the uh the mud flap i guess you call it and then on the bottom there's a little scoop there's a little air scoop You've got the stand gang put together here. So these are two wheels, or four wheels, I should say, that we saw in the clear sprue before. That goes together. It makes sense to build it now because that's what's going to help you keep the uh, the bike upright as you're building it. Okay, so you've got multiple screws here going in, attaching the swing arm in place. And then we start on the exhaust system. Okay, so the exhaust has got multiple colors, the burnt titanium effect. But then the ends of the, uh, the exhaust are quite interesting too. They've got that honeycomb uh, looking uh, venting. The exhaust is attached to the engine, just up here. You've got the, uh, that's the chain guard. You've got your radiators getting put into place here. They get uh, attached to all your framework. Got some plumbing involved. And then you've got some uh, vinyl cables. So here, you see this line here. This is the actual length of 
the vinyl you need. So there's no need to pull out a ruler. You just stretch it across here, trim it, and that'll be 75 mil. Okay, and then you put it all into place, start doing the uh, front forks. So do the reverse shocks. You got the disc brakes going together. And then the front wheels with the decals. Twin discs and massive discs, and they get attached to the forks with a, a long screw. Okay, so that's going to rotate as well. From there, we've got the uh, the front mud guard, and that gets clipped into place. And then the calipers, and also the covers for the discs. And from here, we get into a bit more complexity because it's starting to put together the front end. So the forks are actually going onto the frame now. We have your instrument panel. You got a big uh, long screw that holds the uh, the forks into place. Your handlebars. There's the uh, steering damper. That's all screwed into place. So you just got to be careful when you do screw certain things. You have to uh, sense what items are actually rotating. So when you're doing things like the uh, the steering damper, you don't want to over tighten the screws. Otherwise, the steering's not going to work at all. It's just going to lock it into place. And then from here, we've got some more vinyl that needs to be cut. Again, that's the actual size on the manual. Just stretch out the cable and cut it on the manual will be fine. And they're used for connecting the calipers up to uh, the handlebars. Start making the seat area. So you've got the aer aerodynamic aids across the back. A guide on how to mask and where the decal goes. And then we've got the fuel tank going together. So the fuel tank is uh, two pieces. The fuel tank is attached to the seat component. So you can see how that uh, bayonet's into place. And then you've got the seat itself, the base of the seat, and that is then screwed onto the framework. From there, we've got the uh, little camera, which is uh, for uh, television uh, footage that is attached to the back. We've got the cover for the, uh, the clutch, uh, other engine vent covers, and then we've got the tank getting done here. So the tank's got multiple pieces. As you can see, these are the clear parts we saw earlier, which is the, the grips. Uh, so these are... Um... Oh, they're meant to be clear. Okay, so they're, um, they're suggesting to use a multi-purpose cement, which is clear, to attach those on. So I guess they are clear silicon. So that explains why they're molded in clear. Okay, there's the, uh, the black pad we saw before. So that looks like it's a, a padding for the back of the tank. Okay, so all that gets attached. So this is basically putting most of it together now. You've got the tank cover going on. Uh, you've got uh, uh, various covers going around the engine. And then we start doing the cowling. Okay, so you've got the front of the cowling getting done here. It's all painted. Various aer aerodynamic um, vents going into place. You've got uh, the Windscreen, here's that uh, front wing that's getting put together. That looks very F1-ish. You've got the sides of the cowls getting done. They're all getting masked and painted. And then we have all the cowling going into place. Side cowls going on, they're all screwed together. And then you have the base cowl going on. Once that's on, that's it. And that's your uh, GSX. Uh, double R 2020 all finished. So that's it. That's my open box review of the brand new Tamiya 112 scale Team Suzuki X Star GSX Double R 2020 motorcycle kit. So really beautiful. If you haven't built a motorcycle kit before, very intricate 112 scale uh, has a lot of detail, and particularly these racing bikes are a real challenge to get them right because not only is it all the livery but unlike a racing car where you've got it all on flat panels this livery is across multiple panels so to get them all lined up that's one of the tricky bits too so there you go if you're looking for a challenge great kit